The Legend of Zelda 2 The Adventures of Link is my very favorite Zelda game to replay. I've played through it countless times on the original hardware, on the Game Boy Advance, on Nintendo Switch Online, on my computer, on my phone, on the Zelda Game & Watch. I played it in both English and Japanese. It is one of my favorite games of all time, and I never get tired of it. The puzzles and clues are kind of lame, so I recommend looking up stuff online anytime you get stuck and you aren't having fun. I mean, this is basically the modern day equivalent of reading Nintendo Power or asking the kids on the bus. Now the real fun in Zelda 2, for me, comes from the action gameplay. The game just feels good to control, and then gets even better with the sword upgrades. As for the experience point system, there's ways to get all of the levels maxed out without too much grinding, but I think it takes a bit of foreknowledge and skill, like, you know, not dying. So that may be a bit of a slog for new players. I think there's basically only one place in the game where I kind of uh, grind for experience points, and that's in the first, in the first palace. There's one room that has all these stupid flying skulls, and the only way I know of to get through it without taking tons of damage and health is by killing every one of those flaming skulls, which takes forever, and you do get quite a bit of experience points by doing it. You have to go through the, the passageway two times, at least, but I don't know if that really counts as grinding because I'm just trying to stay alive. So what is a good strategy for leveling up? What comes first, magic, sword, or life? So first of all, I rarely die, uh, because if you lose all of your extra lives, then you lose any experience points during that play session. There are only a few places in the game that kick my butt enough that I'll lose an extra life, but most of the time I'm healing at villages or using the life spell, and that ke keeps me alive just fine. One tip is, I almost never collect a vial of magic without using a spell first. If it's a blue vial, I'll use the shield spell before collecting it. If I'm low on health, I'll use the life spell, especially if it's a red vial. One little trick was, if you have almost full magic and you get a red vial, you can actually use a magic spell while the magic meter is filling up, and it will continue to fill up after you've used the, ma after you've used the magic. So for example, you can collect the red vial and then use the life spell. Uh, the magic meter will drain, and then it'll continue filling back up you'll get the full amount of magic. Uh, it won't just cap out. But yeah, keep using magic. I didn't used to use a lot of magic uh, back when I started playing the game, and I really think I was making the game harder for myself. As for experience points, I'm able to level up at least once per palace, then once again when I get the crystal at the end. Since you get one full level up when you complete a, a palace, if I'm close to leveling up and I'm nearing the boss, then I'll turn around and kill a few more enemies until I level up and then get another level up after the boss. Uh, remember, you can even collect more experience points after killing a boss, but before placing the crystal, if you need to. As for which type to level up first, uh, I lean toward attack, because the stronger I am, the faster I can kill an enemy, and the faster I can kill an enemy, the less it can hurt me. And if I can stay one or even two levels ahead in attack experience, then the game expects from me at that point, it can make the game a lot easier. But more importantly than leveling up is getting the magic and heart containers. I try to get all of them as soon as possible. That's one of those things that's easier to do once you know where everything is. I honestly think Zelda 2 is pretty balanced. Unfortunately, it was balanced by game testers that had played the game to death and got way too good at it. But I'm not a pro player. I get hit by enemies all the time when I should have easily been able to avoid it. But I'm always able to make it through the game, and I almost never see the game over screen, and I always have a ton of fun.